These two documents were adopted by Cabinet and they lay the basis for a clear path forward to decarbonize the economy and to take the opportunities that's available from green industrialization. It's particularly apposite that we're able to release the documents today during COP28 when world leaders are engaged in ways to address the big, urgent and real challenges of climate change. I would first briefly introduce the Green Hydrogen Commercialization Strategy and then speak to the White Paper on Electric Vehicles. The way we power the world is changing. Through the centuries and as our technologies have developed, humans have turned to wood, to coal, to oil, to water, to nuclear fission, and to the sun and to wind to power our communities and our industrial endeavors. Today we stand on the brink of a new development in our efforts to bring cheaper, more accessible energy solutions to the world in the form of hydrogen. The hydrogen economy is a potential game changer, not just for South Africa, but the world at large. It is key to a just energy transition for countries with the potential to decarbonize the various industry value chains, to provide security of energy supply, and contribute towards the achievement of sustainable development goals. Hydrogen can decarbonize a greater range of sectors compared to renewable uh, energy alone. If the 20th century was the century of oil and nuclear energy, the 21st century may become known as the century of renewables and hydrogen. In 2021, I set up a green hydrogen panel chaired by then by the late Dr. Johan van Zyl, who was chairperson of Toyota. It consisted of a number of business and government representatives from the mining, steel, cement and other sectors, as well as government departments responsible for mining and energy, for science and innovation, for trade industry and competition. After the untimely passing away of Dr. Van Zyl during COVID-19, Ms. Joanne Bate from the IDC chaired the work of the panel. Their task was to take the green uh, hydrogen or to take the Hydrogen Society roadmap that was adopted by Cabinet and identify within that a commercialization strategy. The document we're releasing today is that strategy. I want to make five points drawn from the strategy. First, it points to the unique South Africa value proposition. We're well positioned to, uh, to produce green hydrogen thanks to our structural competitive advantages excellent renewable energy resources, our unique expertise on proprietary fissure drop technology uh, and um, endowment of platinum group metals. Second, it identifies export and local demand opportunities. These exist in the local uh, industry, in steel, fertilizers, aviation fuel and transport applications. And the global opportunities are in expediting export of ammonia, methanol and bunker fuel to capture a greater share of the global market. Third, it addresses energy and water security. A well-planned rollout can enable desalination facilities to provide water to communities with minimal impact on green hydrogen pricing. It can supply excess energy into the grid and support transmission infrastructure investment to enable other renewable energy projects to feed into the grid. Fourth, it can connect the green hydrogen roadmap to industrialization and local manufacturing opportunities. Economies of scale demand for equipment along the value chain that provides the business case for local manufacturers of renewable energy components, fuel cells, electrolyzers and balance of plant components. And finally, it addresses decarbonization. Decarbonization of hard to abate sectors uh, can initially be funded by export projects with a progressive decrease in green hydrogen pricing, allowing penetration and decarb uh, decarbonization into more and more local sectors. If I may then turn to the white paper on electric vehicles. The global automotive industry is undergoing one of the most 
seismic shifts in its nearly 150 year history spurred by the urgent goal of decarbonizing the world's economy in the wake of unprecedented climate change regulators and consumers around the world are demanding a range of lower or no emission vehicles which include electric vehicles sustainable fuel driven vehicles and fuel cell technologies these are the three primary new technologies being looked at adoption of electric vehicles has uh, increased globally driven in part by greater government incentives such as tax breaks and targeted subsidies for producers and consumers and demand trends consumers themselves are shifting uh, to uh, to greater uh, purchasing of electric vehicles several regulators have also decided to ban the sale of new internal combustion engine vehicles within the next 12 years as part of the contribution to achieving net zero emissions by 2050 I, I was making the point that several regulators have also decided to ban the sale of new internal combustion engines uh, within the next 12 years as part of their contribution to achieving uh, net zero emissions by 2050. These global trends will have a significant impact on South Africa and its economy. Not only is South Africa the largest automotive manufacturing hub on the African continent, but it's also highly integrated in global uh, supply chains and it draws its components from across the world, including from within the region, and it exports the final uh, consumer product to more than 150 countries across the world. As a large and growing number of countries transition both their consumer and producer markets to electric vehicles, the impact will be significant on South African producers. The effective ban on internal combustion engine vehicles in key markets like the European Union and the United Kingdom will be profound as they absorb nearly half of South Africa's auto production. Cabinet adopted the white paper as the new policy for government. It follows extensive engagement with the auto industry, with meetings with assemblers. Mike Mabasa uh, has been part of a number of those discussions, as well as uh, engagements with component manufacturers. Rene Mutlilal uh, led the component team. And we also engaged with organized labor. We had separate meetings in addition to these broad consultations with each of the seven global OEMs that manufacture cars in South Africa. And those meetings were jointly held by the Minister of Finance and, uh, and myself. These discussions, both the ones where we had the entire industry there, the sectors of the industry and the individual firms, gave us a better sense of actual investment plans and each company's global transition uh, strategy.